Tuesday, October 10th, work session to order. Please rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please have the reading of the mission statement. Richmond Community Schools guide students on pathways of learning to a future of limitless possibilities. All right, thank you. And the vision statement. Richmond Community Schools, a collaborative community nurturing mind, body, and spirit to prepare students for lives of choice, purpose, and service. Thank you both. All right, so the first thing we're going to be discussing is um, our work session topic. McBride Stadium. President Stoll's trustees, uh, yet again, we seem to appreciate you all uh, taking time now to attend the work session, engage in further dialogue and communication uh, centered around the real estate opportunity uh, of McBride Stadium. Last week, uh, Mrs. Scout, I'm sorry, during our last scheduled board meeting, Mrs. Scout had presented to our public and to you all as a board um, the opportunity there at McBride. We have the uh, presentation uh, at the record, uh, if necessary, that we need to revisit the particular slides. But overall, uh, wanted to have an opportunity to extend the conversation as well as open the conversation up for public commentary uh, regarding this matter. So, as far as questions, concerns, thoughts, um, what? Talked to uh, I talked to several members of REA even last week. Um, they were still there after the meeting. And they were all in favor of it. Um, it was like a no-brainer. Um, anytime you're gonna you get that kind of land and facility for that little of a price, it's uh, they were all in favor of it. Um, and I concur in their statements. I mean, obviously, I think it's going to be part of a big master plan to to really rejuvenate that area. Um, that's what I would like to see, but um, I'm more good at it. I, I really think it's a great opportunity. And, um, it's sad to see where it was 10, 15 years ago, see where it is now. And I think this needs some TLC, and I think, I think we can give it to it. Um, I'm going to present something from one of our community members who very interestingly uh, uses the facility but is not RCS. It was, I was contacted by uh, staff at uh, Seton Catholic and they have their concerns in regards to the usage of it. And I'm going to, and I told them I would be negligent at them as taxpayers, you know, taxpaying citizens of the community, not to bring some of the points about. And one of them, um, concern is uh, being able to play home games and practice at McBride Stadium this year and in the future. Um, with the state of the baseball facility in the original, there are no, there are no legitimate options for them. Um, let me see, one of the other important have consistent practice times for them. Uh, we want, they would want to be sure uh, they have a concern about the rental fees that have been paid in the past and will they remain the same or, or be similar that. Um, I will forward these uh, in its entirety to the board and to the administration for those, but um, I know that we're not making a decision tonight, if I understand, and so therefore I'll give, I'll forward this to you just so we can answer their questions because regardless of the fact that they are a private entity, um, you know, their families and, and the people who, who uh, uh, attend Seton Catholic are still Christian citizens and taxpayers, so I want to do my diligence as a board member. Ask the question so they can have their answers. 
Interesting enough, with uh, regards to the work session as we have in the past, I'm curious to know if uh, the board would uh, like to extend uh, that conversation. I'd love for Mr. Scout to uh, interject because I know that uh, uh, if, if, if there's comfort level to that or... No. Yes. I was planning on asking if oh. you could speak to either of those. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, so one thing about the... Ms. Scout, I beg your pardon. No, you're I know that you have a presentation to do if, if or, or whatever we were going to do. This came, this came within the last 24 hours, okay? I would not expect any answers from you necessarily right now uh, because we're discussing these things, but out of fairness to you and everyone, again, if you're not ready, I'm willing to forward all this information to everyone to, get, to give you time to prepare the answers. What I'll say on this particular question, this was a part of the conversation very early on as we were talking with the city of Richmond about just the options. Um, and what we have had discussed was that anybody currently using the facility, we didn't foresee changes per se in, in the availability of being able to use it. Um, some changes in priority um, levels might be different just because of ownership, but in reality, it's not much different than, um, because during, during season, um, RCS has had priority for a long time, and then Seton has had second priority. What I what we've talked about is we didn't foresee any changes if people wanted to use it. Um, as long as we can work it all out, it's fine. As far as usage fees, I can't speak to what was because I only know bits and pieces. I know what we were charged. I know what the operating plan at one time looked like. I can't say it's the same. I can't say it's less. I can't say it's more because that would just be our determination. Um, what I would foresee with this facility is we set up an actual um, cost for usage of the fields, and depending on which type of field it is, what I will say is I have already had multiple requests to rent some of the other fields for practices um, during different seasons. And so that's something that is definitely part of um, our next steps if we decide to do this. It's something that you as a board will have to determine um, and approve as any fees because you approve all usage fees throughout the district for anything you do. Um, that's something that we would need to tackle very early on um, after closing happens because we have been asked to start scheduling for next year. Um, so yes, I have thought about it. Yes, we have talked about it. Um, and our thought was that we could honor um, whatever we could in, in the current um, people that have used it. Um, what I will say is that um, based on preliminary information from the city of Richmond, no one currently has a contract per se. Um, I do not know if that is, we're still waiting on kind of the final information from them, so that could be very wrong. But um, that is so that we can work through that if that's ours. So um, it being fall, that's not abnormal either. A lot of that is done in the winter. Um, but yeah, so our plan wasn't really to, to make major changes when it came to the availability of the facility. In fact, we want to grow it a little bit um, as we look ahead. Well, I certainly understand and all the way back to them, um, you know, that the discussion for their concern be something upcoming in the future publicly if in fact you know it does you know the purchase does does go through um, but you know I just wanted to bring it out there and again I'm sorry to catch you off guard uh, with it that's why I wasn't expecting an answer right now but just to let you know what those were the concerns. It's something that I expected to be a question because it's mm -hmm. a question I would have if I was on the flip side. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It's something that would be important to us um, if we were talking about a different direction, that because it, it does matter, and it's something that we rely on as a facility. So. Oh, thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, I would follow up. I know in the past the board's kind of been split on facilities and community usage, and do we open our doors, do we close our doors? Um, at some point, I think the board probably needs to take make it clear what we want um, you know, moving forward, because I think it's, it's still nebulous. I think there's some administrators that think, Richmond for, you know, McTiernan, Richmond students only. Uh, some people think, let's open it up. Um, so so I think at some point the board probably needs to have that bigger discussion. Um, but personally, I for one think, I mean, Seton should be accommodated 
totally. Um, I think they're part of the community. I think McBride is a community asset, and so I would encourage us to, to go that route um, personally. And uh, But I think to help the administration have a clear path, at some point we need to have a further discussion of, of kind of, because I know it's just been split. Some people think the door should be closed, and some people think they should be open, and we've been like that since I've been on the board. And so I think that makes it difficult for administrators to then know what the board truly is looking for. So I'd like us to kind of clarify that a bit. So why don't we talk about that right now, uh, just so we see what the current board um, is thinking in regards to that. Can I make one comment yep. before you have this conversation? So what I will say is what I remember of that issue is participation in Richmond programming. Facility use at the present has a form that anybody can put in and request to use. And we have um, school related active. We have a chart of fees based on if you are school related, if you are a community partner, if you are not for profit, if you are for profit, if you are an unrelated entity. So right now our doors are technically open for facility rental, um, but the programming piece would be different. Um, and that I think is part of the conversation that. The, has been in the past um, exactly what Mr. Weber said. So I just wanted to clarify that. My thoughts <clears throat> are the fact that, you know, in two years, you know, when you drive, when you drive down that, you know, Northwest 13th Street mm -hmm. corridor, it's not going to look like it looks like on October 10th, 2023, you know, with the renovation of the stadium, should we purchase it, the renovation of the stadium, the fields and everything else, some of the uh, things that are anticipated to be done with those area. And even though with the purchase, it would be an RCS property and an RCS facility, it's still going to be one of those gyms that has been, so to speak, forsaken for a while. When I say forsaken, pushed to the back of the forefront uh, of the community when it comes to thinking, you know, when you consider the, the rich history of that stadium in itself, and not just baseball, but other venues that had been held in that uh, facility in the 50s and the 60s and even in the 70s, you know, that could be a, a huge community boom uh, in so many things. So I, it's just my opinion, um, you know, with the purchase that it becomes you know, something that we can still share with the community. Um, I'll turn and I agree. I mean, I feel like, and I, that's what I heard you say, Seton would still be able to continue to use it and other community members I mean, can request and it's going to be in hopefully a lot better condition. I think we'll really appreciate probably the newer updates that RCS will do. So. Well, I, ante I anticipate seeing things done with the softball fields and mm -hmm. practice fields to where will be a true practice baseball field to where we're having the two fields there. I mean, it won't be available. I'm not even sure if Seton offers softball. Um, if, I mean, maybe give them the opportunity to expand their offerings if, if the facilities are available. So and I, I just think by being able to put multiple fields together and, you know, opportunities are limitless right now on that on that property and we could really make a gym out of it or revive the gym. Yeah. So. yeah. Just to piggyback on what uh, Member Stephen had referenced, uh, I think that uh, the opportunity to, as we, we renovate, uh, if if we are to, to assume the, the property, uh, bringing back a community's home base, if you will. Uh, they're on that northwest side. As the McBride Stadium is served, Star Elementary School serves as that community's home base. Uh, Fairview Elementary is that community's home base, on and on and on. And I think just the idea, uh, as was mentioned, that um, that not only for that northwest side, but also just for the entire community uh, would be Fantastic. Kim, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, um, I had talked to uh, one of the coaches for girls travel softball, one of the teams, they're actually based out of Winchester because there's no place here. So um, he was very excited. Uh, he just, you know, they all they do is travel to tournaments um, around. And he even mentioned, you know, opening it up is, if you think about everyone from Dayton 
almost halfway to Indy, all of those sort of travel teams that a lot of kids are from Richmond, um, that they go elsewhere to play. Yeah. Even if the team might not be based here, you know, certain teams uh, might want to have host their own tournament at McBride, um, which then creates a lot of revenue, um, which then I think interns helps with, you know, Seton and sort of those local things that we want to support um, and keep fees low on certain things if we're, you know, kind of trying to look at that budget and how we plan those things out. So, but he was overly excited that <laughs> the actual potential of, mm -hmm. you know, not driving to Winchester. And, and I think that season is, you know, since softball's in spring still, I believe, you know, summer through fall. So, oh, yeah. you know, there's not necessarily a lot going on, um, depending on the sport, but still. I so, remember when I Karen, was lost in. Karen, mm -hmm. is the field east of the creek uh, in such condition to be used for even practices? The plan would be that we make it um, Currently, it needs some work. Um, we could not practice there this year without they, some work was done in order to do that. And I know Seton practiced there sometimes too, but we would need to do a little bit of upkeep right now. Um, that side of the creek needs some love uh, at the present. So. so there's potential to increase. There is absolutely potential. It's, why do you ask, Ron? Ron, why do you ask? Well, the point being, there's a potential to increase the capacity from yeah. based on improving the condition to make it playable. I mean, I know we, this is kind of like a broken record, but th three years ago, four years ago, before Dr. Wright got here, we were in conversations that we can't get home and home contracts with baseball in the, in the North Central Conference because the schools don't want to come here. And that, that's, that's a dagger in your heart if you've been here as long as I have. And, I probably spent more hours in that field than probably most anybody in here. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, when you consider, it's too bad it got to that. When you consider, <clears throat> when it comes to <clears throat> high school baseball, and even when there was the uh, American Legion uh, baseball leagues during the summer and everything else, this was the place to come to. You know, regional, semi-states, championship games that were held held there. Everybody. Everybody talked about how, how magnificent um, a bright stadium was and coming there when it was, you know, municipal stadium, you know, before it was renamed. Um, and I just look forward to it getting back to being that drawing point where people say, we're going to Richmond, we're playing at McBride, you know, that's, you know, that will be our new tournament center. Um, For those of us from Richmond, it has a special place. I, mean, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Well, it's my, kind of like, my, my grandfather, right. my, mother's, yeah. my mother's father, I, yeah. I forgot, and I never met him because he had passed away before I was born, but had been in a wrestling tournament in there when they used to have semi-pro wrestling tournaments there. And he, he was on a venue. He had wrestled in the bride. And I remember my mom and my grandmother talking about that. So... You know, it the history there just mm -hmm. is incredible. It's rich. So not to move off reminiscing, but what what's the, uh, the and I know we're not getting, but the, there's a field next to the pickleball courts at the city. Was, is that a softball field? Is it is. Mm -hmm. Is that usable right now by the city? Mm -hmm. yeah, they use it for the corporation. Okay. The the evening. Tournament. And they'll maintain. Mm -hmm. They'll maintain it. Mm -hmm. And there's four fields on the property that we are <coughs> entertaining. Yes. 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 And, and part of the, the purchase is that the city would like to retain usage of one of those fields, whichever is we, that we keep as a softball field for those corporation um, league nights. They want to keep that going, and um, that would be something that they have actually asked to work with us on, which we completely agree. It's very positive for our community, so we we'll keep that going. Um, my only other question, and I don't want Karen to go through her presentation again. I know she presented a lot of plans. I have, oh, I think the properties, I think we need to go, I think we should approve it tonight actually, but I think we need to move forward uh, ASAP. I'm very concerned about the plans and the long-term plan. 
I don't really, and I know we've had some discussions about a, a, a board or a, a superintendent working group possibly um, to have some input on that. Because I think what I've seen now is 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 not what I need to see. And so uh, I think I think about you know what we did at Tiernan with the sound system, the bleachers, the lighting, the floor, and how the board had a ton of input in all those things. Because that is, as you mentioned, a it's more than the school. I mean, that's something that I just don't want to, you know, Karen to go off and do. I mean, I think McBride needs to be done with a lot of board input. I know that people don't like to hear that administration, but I'm concerned that it's done to the level that we need it to. Not that it, it couldn't be, but I just, I think when we, we tend to just go off in silos, we, we kind of get ourselves in trouble. So I'd like to see a lot of more planning a lot more input uh, if that board committee works or whatever. I think that's a good way to go, um, and kind of kind of take that McBride model where let's take let's have an overall plan. This is what it wants to look at. I mean, we fought over taking those bleachers off. I mean, that was a big cost savings, and it was a hard decision. But I think the board owned all that, and I think the result pretty much speaks for itself. So that's the kind of model I like to I'd like to see with McBride. A lot more board input and uh, a very good plan about you know what this will look like with athletics with community operations and that sort of thing so and mr weber is absolutely i think that uh, what you referenced uh, if we are to acquire it uh, our administration team may may even uh, welcome such a motion uh, this evening to uh, to proceed with uh, such uh, such agreement uh, regarding a, a Purchasing agreement, but of what um, could be found and what's been found in the past with the superintendent's working groups, a lot of those things will be fleshed out and, and, um, and at the participation uh, by those uh, on the uh, board of trustees that would uh, prefer to be a part of, along with uh, community members and, and others. We can accomplish that. How do we foresee that um, looking? Uh, you know, you mentioned a committee or working group. I think working group would. Uh, so an I, option, but yeah. yeah, I mean, I have some ideas, and I don't know. I mean, people can bat them around like they want, but um, there's kind of a twofold process to this that we need to focus on. One is there's substantial work that just has to be done, whether it's pretty or not, and it's not pretty. It's just work that needs to be done on field maintenance. <coughs> it's on um, some things that aren't about looks and appearances. They're just about making sure that things are cleaned up, put back together. And in good order so that we can um, open the season next year um, it, it, better than we we found it coming in so there that is a much more simplistic um, piece to the pie those things have to be done in order I mean there's just requirements that have to be met so that that part isn't about the looks necessarily so much um, my thought on a working group is that there are some things that can be done with this that isn't just about picking paint colors or picking um, appearances. Some things are about revenue generation and comfort levels. Some of it is about donor seeking. Some of it is about capital campaigns if we decide to go that route. Um, and some of it is, is, in my opinion, a little bigger than just the sport even. So um, I, I actually have already provided Dr. Wright with a map to what I think would be a helpful solution to meeting that need, but also providing us with some substantial resources in the fact of people that know the business or have a vested interest, both um, from the youth side to people in the community that have put a lot of time and energy into that facility and love that they, they care about what we do with it, that they provide us with some, um, some information in how to best maintain. Um, it could also um, substantially assist us um, in the maintenance department um, in, you know, the best practices and things like that, that we do really well with our fields now that we maintain, but it also would just give us another level. Um, but so my, my thought is that a working group, because I'm going to be, you guys all know I'm brutally honest. We cannot spend three years on a floor again. It's too hard. And so, and it's too time consuming. I don't consuming. think we're looking I, for that, Karen. I please, think we're looking uh, for long-term, I mean, this is a long-term project. I understand that. I don't care what the color is. What I care is where softball is, what, what so, uh, 
with tennis courts where they, I mean, I want the client. Right. And we've seen nothing. Well, you shouldn't be seeing anything because it's not our property yet. And we can't have too big of a conversation until we are willing to say we want to own it. We have to be careful and said. gentle about this because I am working on options for you. What I need to know is, are we serious about actually doing this? Because there's no point in talking about options if we're not going to own it. And that's something that getting the cart too far before the horse wastes a lot of time and a lot of money because those plans have to be generated by architects or by um, individuals that map those so that you can see them. I 100% agree with you. You want a long-term plan. I want a long-term plan. That is absolutely everything that I want to do, but I also want to do it the right way. And I know that the first step of that is deciding if we even want this property. And so that's the part that, to me, we have to focus on the pieces in line and in, in chronological steps so that we can do it most effectively um, and in the most expedited process possible when we get there. Um, and so Mrs. Mrs. Stoles, I apologize. I'm oh, sorry. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, what I'm curious to know, and Attorney Cross, I believe you may be able to clarify, because I, I did hear, and I'm not trying to, uh, not trying to take advantage of the, the, the statement that was made, but to Mrs. Scalf's reference, uh, if the board had an appetite this evening to grant uh, unto we as administration, uh, as well as uh, our corporation, to continue uh, in the in the fashion of acquiring, could could they, I guess, let me get to, could our board this evening, uh, because it was mentioned, uh, could they arrive at a vote to allow us to, um, uh, or... Ron, could we take a vote tonight? There we go. <laughs> there we go. What you, you can vote. I mean, you can, what are you going to vote on? And that's, that, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, because I know that the, if, if, with regard to a purchase agreement, um, um, could they take a vote that um, if a purchase agreement were to uh, be satisfactory or uh, if we were to uh, receive a purchase agreement and it was satisfactory, we could continue to move in that Well, time. I mean, that would be the next step. And that's, yeah. I've got the second or third iteration of it right here. Yes, sir. And I'm still waiting for comments. Yes, sir. Uh, my hope was that we could have it nearly final by the 18th meeting. But I, right now, the ball's not in our court. Yes, sir. Uh, as recently as what two this afternoon when I sent you the I, mine was red I think theirs is blue but <laughs> between the, your printers you know we've got quite a bit of color here uh, but eventually we're narrowing the issues and and I think I, I'm not aware of anything that I see as a quote deal killer uh, I mean I think we know enough about the property I don't think there's a lot of environmental scares there uh, I think mechanically uh, Karen's been looking at it for three or four years, seriously, the last eight, six, seven, eight months. So I think, you know, we pretty well know what, what it is and what it isn't. And Mr. Scalp, is there anything from an administrative standpoint, again, within our ring that we would need from the board this evening prior to, uh, if again, it all comes to fruition on the 18th, is there anything that we would need for our board to uh, arrive at a vote or an understanding or? I think that's just up to them. Um, I'm working on plans, but I feel to a degree that if we over plan right now and something falls through, um, I have seen that happen before. I mean, we had another facility where, you know, closing fell through the day before, and I just want to make sure that we aren't um, uh, over committing resources to that if, if that should happen. Um, so I, I guess that would be a question that I have for the board. What else do you need in order to make that decision? Um, is there anything else? Are we um, comfortable with the information? What I will say is that um, I, I'm working on things, but we can't necessarily talk about them until we own it mm -hmm. um, because it's moot point. Um, the other part is just knowing that um, there, the work that has to be done um, is routine work that we would do. Like if it was our facility, we would need to do it anyway. And so the parts that we talk about first year aren't flashy. They're just making sure that we get, get things back up to speed where we would consider them to be, um, to be in the condition that we would want them to be. So I think from the board perspective, just 
you know, I guess it would be up to them if there was anything else that you guys need. I need to know that. Um, if there are things that, the one thing that, um, you know, if we get to where the agreement is tight on time and we get to the 18th, are there things that you need to know um, about it? We've pretty much given you the, the nuts and bolts of things, but is there anything else that you have questions on? We talked about the usage that we had discussed in the, the conversations just to make sure that both sides were comfortable with that and understood kind of where we were going to go or what we were thinking um, from both sides. Um, I, I guess that's my question kind of for the board. Is there anything you're missing from me? Because I might be able to speak to it. It just may not be something presentation worthy or something like that. I think that to, to I mean, I, we've, the things we've asked for, we're not going to have in that week. And I think you think that, and so I guess I would say I'm, more than happy to go ahead and acquire the land, make the, the deal that Ron and you have worked on. Um, however, before significant investment is made uh, beyond what's been agreed upon in the purchase order or the, the uh, buyer's order, I would like a lot of board input. Thank you for saying that, John, because I remember your, the, your statement prior to that. Um, you announced that you were in favor of moving, but then you had some other comments to make after that. I was a little unsure, but I'm glad, you know, that you just clarified, because I can never ask you directly, are you in favor of the purchase and then, and then, you know, letting the pieces fall in place with planning, uh, you know, the architectural designs and the fields and everything else. And that's where I am right now. And I'd like to see the plans, not just for McBride, but the overall athletic plans for how this may affect other pieces of property that we own. That's actually, I'm, I'm actually working on all of that. And I think that's what I most heard as well uh, from Mr. Weber. And that's what I also want to assure is that um, once this comes to fruition, uh, again, I'm optimistic in speaking to, uh, to, to, to fruition, but once it comes to fruition through the uh, working group, that's where such decisions uh, and, and conclusions will be arrived at from a more communal uh, approach than as uh, Ms. Weber mentioned in, uh, in, just in, in, in silos. I think that's what we're uh, going to, we will accomplish within the working group is to bring everyone to the table. To, uh, to Jan, and, and the other part about our working group, there's going to be pieces to it. I don't think everybody should have to sit at that table every single time. If we're talking about a board plan, only the board members and, and the internal like people should really to involve community members and some of it may be a lot because we're going to be asking them to, to attend sometimes um, on a frequent basis depending on what's going on. So that working group may be a little fluid as they were um, in previous actions where we would invite the community members during certain conversations but maybe not all conversations. I would see it looking like that as well as we um, approach this. Yeah, I was kind of looking at it um, I'm just looking at the year one and year two, if we have a separate little working group of my thought process was, yeah, we then we can really sit down and, you know, just start throwing, throwing out the ideas and sort of talking about the different categories, right? Because it really is, I think, um, to your point too, like, yeah, we have year one, but it's, I think it should be a, okay, year one, but what? do we have to do for baseball, period, like that piece, um, and sort of just break it down in different sections a little bit, only because, A, we don't want to rework anything, right? So if, once you talk through, it's like, hey, we have to get this done for baseball, but will that affect something that we wanted to do in year two, like adding in softball? And so in my brain, that's just kind of how I was looking at it. Like, we'll get to that. Um, which <laughs> isn't necessarily uh, your thought process on it, but, um, you know, just being interested in baseball and having worked at McBride and just sort of understanding that facility um, and some of the history and what's been done and the nuances, um, you know, I think I might be a little calmer in what is to be expected, but that's just because of, you know, Deanna is here and she knows, you know, spending 18 hours a day for <laughs> days and days uh, at that field is, you know, just is a slightly different perspective. But that's just kind of how I looked at it because 
I do think when we have a year one, year two, that plan might eventually be extended out a little bit as we add on, but it's really like, what do we want, right? Like, here's baseball, here's softball. What does Seton want? What do they have? What are the other, you know, travel teams coming in? What is the community piece? And you don't want to work in silos, but they sort of all need to be thought out, kind of thrown out, which to me, that's if there's a smaller working group, then that can be brought to the bigger group to kind of hone in on some of those other questions. Because <clears throat> as the board, I mean, our biggest question is tennis courts, which has been on the table for years. And if we, if I'm looking at priority capital investment, I think tennis is, I mean, it's been on the slate and something has to be done. Now maybe we can squeeze another year out, but that's, uh, several hundred thousand dollar, half a million dollar project. And so you have these two facilities dovetailing together possibly, but also competing for those same limited resources and dollars. Um, so I think it's just good problems to have, I guess. I was going to say, uh, yeah, in previous practice with our work sessions, uh, the intentionality uh, centered around um, particular agenda items. I know that we do have a few uh, this evening that are here to... Uh, yes, uh, to, I wanted to, yes. before inviting Absolutely. them, yes. if that's all right. Absolutely. Um, okay, first of all, I haven't heard much from Pete, so... <laughs> I <laughs> have. <laughs> I'm <laughs> scared. Really great meeting, has it? Where are you going, Nicole? <laughs> yeah. No, I, and, and I guess my question goes to where we're at on the contract, and I, you're, we're not comfortable with it at this point. And the city's not comfortable with it if we were to approve well it's not finished i don't, don't know i wouldn't i wouldn't characterize the agreement. status of it as reflecting discomfort on either parties uh, by either party but but it's not final okay and and my concern is in the in the scope of other things going on we're looking at uh collective bargaining and making sure dollars are, are available there to um, satisfy those needs that are there, that, that we have enough uh, dollars to go around to purchase this and not just purchase it, but to be able to maintain it and bring it, to rehab it and bring it to a level that it's usable, safe, and um, something that that uh, is on the level of our other properties that are in our, in our inventory already. Um, so that that's my biggest concern with with uh, McBride. I've talked to um, same folks Brad talked to, and they had a comfort level with McBride, uh, which eases that up a little bit. And I've, I think there's going to be some community partners that will be able to um, work with us on this project so it's not taking out of the same pool of dollars that would come from. Um, it obviously wouldn't come from the education fund, but not from our normal op operations fund either. I, I, I'm going to just that has not been determined so we have to understand that right now it would come from operations so sure. i just want to be very clear about that because we have no guarantees at this point in time okay. so we need to just all be very comfortable with this would have to come out of our operations fund the one thing that changed in the legislation two years ago um, in the operations fund you now get growth quotient each year um, so sometimes it's you know zero it's only been one time negative in my 13 years here um, but there is growth quotient that then provides you with um, a change in revenue year over year, um, generally in a positive way. And so that is something that we hadn't had before that we do have now. It does help us a little bit, especially with circuit breakers being what they are here. Um, that is something that does assist us in, in the, the operational facilities and technology side of things here. So I think it's 4% for next year. It's 4% this year. Um, they haven't released it yet. 
for sure. It's but it was that this year, so it's possible that it'll stay that. It's, it was three point something last year, so yeah. When we talk about you know the work and the cost of like getting this up and running, uh, when we purchase something like this or do the work, can we? I know we talked about just reaching out to the community, but is it really something like some things can be done like pure sweat equity? Like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I think call the arms of every person's ever played baseball and like, they're going to be there because how many hours they spent, but I just didn't know, you know, what work can sort of be divvied up in that way. And can we actually, so I've actually like been looking at that. Um, we have a, Fantastic, and when I say fantastic, I am underestimating um, the work that happens in our maintenance department. We have um, very skilled laborers, laborers. We have concrete. Um, we have HVAC. We have electrical. We and they are um, they are actual like certified in it. And so some of that work will happen internally. As I said during the presentation, those numbers are high based on the fact that if we have to go out and get it because we don't have time to do it internally or because it might be something that needs to be done that we can't, mm -hmm. um, then I wanted to be sure you had like worst case uh, as much as possible. I mean, there can always be some unexpected thing, but, um, but we have a really great crew of workers here that can do a ton of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. We have somebody on the crew that is actually on the field maintenance crew um, for Centerville Youth Leagues. And so, like, we have very skilled staff. I've been contacted by a couple of people in the community that are willing to come help us um, and put that sweat equity in because they they love Richmond schools and they love McBride Stadium. Mm -hmm. And I do think that um, that is 100% possible. All right, any further discussion before we open up the dialogue to our public um, and continue the discussion? I look forward to you a name of a Richmond graduate of the early 1980s, if I recall, and uh, I won't mention the name publicly right now, but had been a baseball player and football player and everything else. And if I recall, he had been a facilities director for the former Hoosier Dome a number of years, but he played in that stadium, and I'll uh, forward uh, the name to you as a possible potential resource for contact. Okay, thanks. All right, so uh, first person we have, um, Deanna. Are you wanting to join the conversation, or? No, I just wanted to be present to okay. kind of get a feel for where the thing, where things were. Yeah. Um, as a as a user in the past, and just kind of kind of hit us from no, out of nowhere. Um, so just trying to get a grasp on, on what's happening. Well, you've got insight, so please share anything. Oh, I wish I did have insight. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Beeman, if you like, you can join us here at the, uh, yeah. at the, uh, the dais if you like. There. Well, I can. Um, <laughs> So yeah, no, I, I literally just wanted to come and be present on behalf of our, our foundation. Uh, we run a 501c3 uh, college uh, sports team and we obviously have utilized McBride in the past. Um, so this all came very sudden uh, to us last Monday morning. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> so any, um, any pitfalls that we need to be aware of uh, or any? <laughs> Um, yeah, but I'm probably not comfortable sharing those. Okay, this nope, time. that's fair. That's fair. Okay. And there's positives and, and negatives. Okay. So. Yep. Any questions for Deanna? She's an unofficial public mm -hmm. commentator <laughs> at this point. Well, I'd be very interested, you know, in the future with hearing what she has to say considering uh, her connection to the stadium over the last uh, 20 years. And, and uh, I think that her input will be rather valuable for us in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, is that, is the team can planning to continue next summer? Um, well, I, I will say that we, um, we play in, in what's called the Great Lakes Summer Collegiate League. Uh, it's a 12 member league from around the Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky area, Michigan, 
markets as well. Um, and we run into some heavy deadlines coming September, October, November. And so when we learned about this, we were just unsure how this might affect us and if we can, you know, be able to use the facility and, and what that all looks like. So just some uncertainty on our end, just not really knowing. Um, so at this time, we have kind of put a put a hold on what our plans are at this point. Um, so, but we are also under some time constraints. So it's a very uh, strategic position that we that we're sitting in at this point. Yeah, a switch of landlord, so to speak, yeah, is kind of, of what you're hearing. Yes. yes. Potentially, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, and to, to kind of circle back to um, where we are as far as, um, are, are we as a board open to the use of the property being used by non-RCS entities? Um, it seems like the consensus is that we are as a board. So if um, there are members that are feeling otherwise, please, um, it does seem like that's some direction we need to be getting. Um, I like they're they're part of the community as well, mm -hmm. and so um, I think it would be a mistake to not allow them to play there. Mm -hmm. So they've invested a lot of time and effort there, and um, do some of the upkeep as well. And, um, and there's a there's a lot of people that look forward to one of their games. Yeah. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. It does bring um, a fun component to Richmond. I mean, yeah, yes, the games are, yeah, and the fireworks and all the yeah. Yeah. all the fun pieces. The yes. best all fireworks. The in town. Yeah, it's all the showy stuff. Yes, <laughs> all the fun stuff. Yes. So. Okay. All right. Well, again, we I appreciate the opportunity yeah. to to yeah. be here and listen. Yeah. Um, is there? Are, are we able to obtain whatever the presentation yeah. was? Okay. So it's on our website. It's on the website. Okay. Perfect. Yep. So we'll publish. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, All right. Next, we got Nancy. I, I believe no. uh, Mr. Joe and Nancy, are you both together? Uh -huh. Yes. If you'd like to join us and, and contribute, or if you're just here to listen, that's fine I'm as well. I'm just, I'm just here to listen. I don't know if you guys have something. Yeah. <laughs> please join us. I, I would, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Please do. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I would say to start with, our, our collective family has an excess of, uh, I would say, 100 years experience around McBride. We live within a few blocks, so I know what happens there uh, on a daily basis, basically. Uh, my my step-grandfather played there in the 40s, so and I have pictures of proof. Uh, I was really interested, and I thought it might come out how this opportunity came up and but I if maybe I missed it or were you just lucky or and before you your name for the board uh, oh I'm sorry it's... Joe Larson Larson uh -huh. okay thank you uh, before you answer I I've sat in the park office some years ago and uh, uh, numerous times and repeatedly asked to buy McBride, and I was met with, with blank stares and, and uh, no statements. And now all of a sudden, uh, here, here this is. So, surprise, surprise. Uh, anyway, lucky you, if you can get it done. Uh, I say lucky, but uh, knowing, knowing what it costs to run a place like that, uh, luck may not be uh, the word, yeah. exactly. And is that something, can we address some of those um, questions? Um, I don't know if we can do that from a legal perspective, Ron. Um, what do you mean address the questions? The questions are how, how is it that we, as a public entity, are afforded this opportunity? Um, is that something we can address? If you know, I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, okay. I know it's been something that's been discussed between the city and, 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 and the school corporation for at least at various levels, at least five, six years. I think your question is, why now? Yeah. And not, not necessarily now. I guess now is part of it, but how, how did it came about when, I guess basically when I was shut out? Because I, I can, I'll sit here and tell you, I know I can call about five people right now and they, they would buy that property in a minute, mm -hmm. you know? 
and uh, all private individuals. individuals yes. mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and again, some some reference. I was uh, even Optimist member, so I know across the road is floodplain. We we built the majority of that stuff. Your your JB diamond that you're talking about. We me and three other guys did that entire field when we tore the other one down. So I know. I know every aspect of, of that field. Um, so you sound like a community engagement partner. For <laughs> <us>. <laughs> I thought I was a slave. Well, I, thought, yeah, I, I don't know. I know we did the, some of the history, and I'm not from Richmond, so McBride isn't. I don't have the stories Aaron and, and Kim have, but uh, but I know there was. I think back in the day there was a partnership with the schools and the city. I believe I read it in some of the material we've been provided for the facility. And I think that when you say how, I mean, I think looking historically back to those, that partnership, I think that's where I would assume that that came from, uh, rightly or wrongly. And then I think it's, I think when Seton built their field, I think McBride kind of lost that, that bigger, uh, uh, client or, or, uh, render Earl, I'm sorry, Earl. And, uh, and it seemed like that kind of started paving the path for where we're at today. I could be wrong, but. And just to just... piggyback on that, as, as a school superintendent of the information that was presented to me by my administrative team and those uh, in the field, if you will, um, of the challenges that have been for some time, and I think it was referenced even earlier this evening, um, the fact that we were challenged with other school corporations uh, being willing to uh, commit to home and home or, or scheduling complex not, not only that but also the, the safety and security uh, of that was the, uh, the certainly part you know still that is necessity breeds right. innovation and, yes. and yes. we were looking at facilities yeah. Yeah. possible alternative facilities to McBride for the for yes. programming for Richmond for Richmond High School yeah. and that was four, four or five years ago you know yep. and so I mean, I'm not saying we initiated this last round, but I think there, the, I think there's been discussions going, and there's, and I think the city administration, uh, through this one at least, has known there's at least a, an ear here that it will listen to possibilities. Now, Karen may know, I don't. I don't know if there's anything just happened that suddenly now it has to happen. No, I, I know what you know. Um, I, we can't answer that because it's not ours to answer. All we don't know. Um, the one thing that I can say is that it is important to everybody that it remain a community-based area, and that's probably just lent itself to continue with the relationship that we've had for a while, in knowing that that will be important to us as well. But I can't speak to that. And the I'm city, just the I'm city just has making right refusal. If you yeah. Were to get the yeah. Right. So I'm just making an assumption based on the fact that a school um, has a lot of the similar. Um, interests and um, and thoughts when it comes to community as the city would and so um, but yeah we we have had to have conversations on our end about facilities um, for quite a while now I think also what mr. Weber alluded to and uh, as far as the historical partnership and the intentionality uh, initially uh, of, of such partnership may also have weighed into it but well, I, I, I do believe the school should have its own field. I, I do feel like that is uh, everywhere you go, and we, we, we've traveled ball for many years. Uh, people have nice facilities, and they usually have big money backers, and, and the better your money backer, the better your field you play. Hence, Erwin, you know, uh, and we, we played on many fields that are, are exceptionally nicer than Erwin. Uh, Few and far in between, and and again, they're going to be in excess of a million dollars. Is what they're going to be. So I'm not I'm not sure if you're prepared to put that kind of money into McBride. I, I don't know. That's a, that'll be your decision at that point. Uh, but but in any event, the, the original question was you know I I offered and was met with, uh, and uh, and that's how I uh, I wish you good luck on being able to buy. That's what I do. And uh, as far as your, I would have something to say on your your statement about having a working group 
to maybe thoroughly in ideas on the field, there's more than just one person. This city seems to think one guy knows something about everything on the field, and that's not necessarily true. I'm here to tell you, because we, we've been around. Okay, I, I thank you for your time. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. Sure. Yeah. For what it's worth, since the new flood maps have been drawn, right field is entirely in a flood plain now. I would guess the majority of that area down there is a flood And the plain. entire eastern. Mm -hmm. I, I know for a fact because we, we built the volleyball shelter in between the volleyball courts and, yeah. and immediately got red flags. <laughs> yeah, <there laughs> Shut us off. <laughs> so uh, I, I did my due diligence with the city before us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right. Okay, further thoughts and comments? It look, at, just at this point, it looks like uh, we are interested in um, possibly uh, going for, it sounds like there's strong interest in pursuing this purchase. Um, that's what I'm hearing. Um, and um, so much so that we would want to give kind of a preliminary approval at this point. Are we thinking that that would be I mean, I, I think I would be comfortable making a motion place. that we, based on the rough draft of the purchase agreement, which I don't think is going to change substantially, or at least the, the board would be particularly interested in. I could be wrong, but but uh, but based on what we've seen so far, and I don't know how to articulate that, but I would move that we proceed with the purchase agreement. Okay. Um, and recognizing the time factor, after we sign the purchase agreement, we can get to closing, but... There's a 90 day due diligence period. Uh, we certainly want to survey. Uh, I mentioned the floodplain issue that the gentleman brought up that is more pronounced now since FEMA's done its new maps. I want to talk to Greg Steens. This is in the city's jurisdiction, not the county's, to see, make sure we know what he's comfortable with our doing the way of facility improvements in a floodplain, and he may have some restrictions. There are a lot of things between signing the purchase agreement and getting to the closing table that are going to have to pay, happen. Survey, uh, I'm at least a phase one environmental. I, I just had my eyebrows tweaked when I read a provision that said that they think there may have been trash or dumped uh, areas in the field to the east across the, the, and I had no idea, behind the armory. So we'll, I don't know what that means. So there's, I mean, there's just, you know, Kristen can relate to do a, to do a purchase like this, there's just a lot of balloons that are in the air that have to come down sequentially or together, but they have to come down. So, Ron, just so we're hearing you, um, is is that a caution or a commendation? Are you com are you commending this um, preliminary approval because you're like, there's a lot of work to do between now and then. Let's get keep well, the ball rolling. Well, the next step is, is to get the purchase agreement put put in place, which means you're gonna, at that point you're committed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Karen has done as good a job as she can do in uh, trying to identify the variables that are there. Uh, and to, the city's been very gracious. They've given you, Karen's now one of their key holders. Uh, <laughs> it's wow. not an exclusive club, I don't think, but that's okay. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we, they, they've given us access. We've, we've been there, I, you know, and it's... So you're feeling like maybe just us verbally saying we're we're interested. Let's keep this ball moving. I, I would hope that than... we could really do something by the at the meeting on the 18th. I mean, I I, I can't okay. say that's that's not totally within our control. But I, hmm. I, I, again, issues come up as we dig as we peel the onion, so to speak. All right. So you're you're thinking that maybe that motion. Would be better served withdrawn. Is that kind of? <laughs> I don't know. We no, made just, There are just a lot of variables okay. in play that aren't okay. in our control. Appreciate and your insight. I think if we can get an agreement in place by the end of October, I think that would be conducive to our best interest. Okay. Okay. But it does sound like we're definitely um, interested. Is what we're hearing. It sounds like we're definitely um, interested in also having a working group. And we hear you loud and clear, Karen. As far as there are some. Um, mandatory structural changes that we would need to just kind of be moving forward with. And then I, I personally also like the idea of having some key players outside of the board that are invited to the table when, uh, when appropriate. So um, it sounds like people are good with that. Um, all right, what else, what else do we need to 
discuss in regards to that. Anybody? Okay, Aaron's got the thumbs up. All right, well then, uh, moving away from the McBride uh, conversation on to 4.01, we have other discussion. Um, anything else that you need to be considering for the good of the board? I'm gonna have to leave in a few minutes. I've got to speak tonight, uh, but keep going. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up was Dr. I, Dr. Wright and I went to the uh, state school board conference um, two weeks ago. One thing that was real interesting talking about, they had a whole breakout session basically on public commentary and things of that nature. Uh, finding out around the state is, I didn't see anyone else in the state that had a five minute public commentary. Everybody's three, and there was a bunch of them that only had one. So, I mean, maybe we want to look at in the future or start talking about it of, to help streamline the meetings to go to a three minute public commentary. Uh, and all the, we need to put that in policy or we have it as a guideline or if that's something we want to talk about, even. But that's interesting, Brad, because I've I've said that to people, not necessarily in this venue, sitting at this table uh, for several years. You know, our five minute uh, time period that we grant uh, far exceeds that which normally, and I mean, you said, you know, I pointed up yeah. three fingers to you. Normally that is, you know, 60 plus 70% of school corporations around the country that have public commentary. Limited to three minutes. I couldn't believe how many of them only had one. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have like a, uh, where you can't defer time to someone. It's, mm -hmm. it's your time or no one's. Mm -hmm. There's no deferments. And it was just really interesting to see all that and see how, I mean, just how different we are. I mean, we're accommodating, I guess. But. I can't think of the last time that we've stopped something. So we know when we've stopped it, people before. I, I, yeah, yeah, I remember, but it's been a while. Yeah. I'm just saying that maybe five minutes is too much <clears throat> time. Right, yeah, I think it is too. But, mm -hmm. uh, is it policy or pra practice? Our policy says up to five minutes. Yeah. But isn't it, um, limit, isn't it limited to 30 minutes? And that was our... That's not our practice. Not yeah, that's, yeah. So, that's not if, yeah, if, it, if we have over... In the past, if we've had over 10 people, we've always knocked them down to three minutes. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's just kind of been past practice. But, you know, with uh, us going to NEOLA and everything else and getting our policies up to date, and maybe we want to look at uh, actually putting that in there in verbiage that, so that we have stuff to stand on so no one can say favoritism or anything like that. And, Brad, if I, I'm glad you said favoritism because if I – if I were to throw uh, a chink in that, the reality of it is uh, we have, you know, with somebody sitting here at the timer on, you know, critical faults that have come forward, we have, to an extent, uh, we have shut some down. I'm, I'm sorry, your time is up. And then at other times, there have been members from this table who have said, go ahead, let them speak, let them continue. And I have always had the concern of the consistency or the inconsistency of that. Depending upon what he or she is saying from that podium, you know, five minutes or that time frame should, should be consistent with the next person who has to speak, whether we like the message or disagree with the message. And so, so it is, and regardless of who the person is, you know, regard whether it's gonna be five minutes or three minutes, we should be consistent and say you have 30 seconds left. What's the county? Mm, not aware of a stretch public policy. commentary? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we don't, uh, you mean the old, or you mean the county? Not the, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not that. aware of a strict policy. That Are we, you? We, we never, county? council side never had anything that was strict policy that I'm aware of. And 
County Council, you talking about? Yeah. You rarely have public comment. That means well, <laughs> or public attendance, let alone public comment. Yeah. 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 No, I I've got two public hearings tomorrow night at the school corporation at One Elk Creek, and very first thing in in, in the president's uh, spiel is uh, please limit your comments to three minutes or less. That was my next question to you. Was I know you represent other school corporations? What are their comments? <sighs> I just saw that one today. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'll look at the policies and see. I can't. I, I can't speak with any more authority than that. I just that coincidence that I happened to even be looking at that today. But, yeah. Is it normal practice to be able to cap total public comment at thirty minutes or whatever that number is? And if you have, well, I think it ought to be a policy. I, I, I think it ought to be in the policy that. Okay. And then how you implement that policy is always going to be at somewhat discretion of the chair and the collective consensus of the board assembled. But, uh, uh, I mean, you got to go back to, you know, educate the public that fundamentally, unless it is a public hearing, in which tomorrow night we're dealing with bonds and there are two public hearings. But unless the matter requires a public hearing, the general rule is there is no right for any member of the public to speak at a public meeting of this board. Mm -hmm. Right emphasize in air quotes the word right uh, there is the right to be present to record and that means take notes it means if you're not really creating a disturbance you can video cam it now with your you know whatever but you don't have the right to address the board that being said i think it's the by far the more frequent practice that most governing bodies particularly school boards that are so vested with the community the interest of their patrons and the patrons' kids; those are pretty, pretty significant interest. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying there aren't any school boards in Indiana that don't allow public comment, but I can't. I, I've never heard of one that hasn't. Uh, but again, it's not a legal requirement; it's a policy, and I think that your policy needs to reflect the practice that you wish to have. And there'll be times when, if you have a push button issue, that three minutes is going to seem like not nearly, you know, a long time, but. You just have to deal with it. And I do think probably as a board, even though there isn't a right, we do want to continue to extend sure, that courtesy sure. for yeah. sure. I'm not, I'm um, not saying take it so, away at all. Right, just, right. No, I'm just letting you know just what seeing, we found out. I was yeah. kind of, you know, you're, you're in this role for however many years and you just kind of become accustomed to it. And mm -hmm. Then you start hearing it and, and people are looking at you like, are you crazy? I mean, well, yeah, what? The three it wasn't that long ago that we had two, two right. periods say, of public yeah. comment. Right. One and half hour at the beginning, half hour at the we end. Were, we were talking and in the breakout session. I, I can't remember exactly what it was I stood up and talked about, but when I told him that, you know, we get five minutes, I mean, it's like every head in the place turned and like, are you serious? And just, it was, it was pretty, like, eye opening. I was like, whoa, I was not expecting that. So. I was like, oh. that, that tells me everything I need to know right there. <laughs> was when they, when they did the head turn and the whole audience was like, I want to see this crazy. I, mean, I don't know that we've had a problem. I think, uh, I mean, I think when I was president, I was more apt to, to cut the, the time short than Mrs. Stoltz. But, I mean, we tend to just let people speak. And, you know, I think in my time on the board, you know, I don't know that we have to reinvent our policy or do a whole lot different than what we've been doing. To me, though, if we address it now when it's not a problem, then when it does become a problem, then it doesn't seem like we're, you know, yeah. like when, was it, when has it been a problem? It, I haven't known it to be, but I'm yeah, saying I, if I it does, I think we're solving a problem we don't have. Kind of. Maybe it's just kind of like getting in line with where we should be. Mm -hmm. what, I don't the know. New, what the current yeah. norms are. If we're, I mean, if it were three minutes and a max of 30 minutes, then we would allow 10 people, which I can't remember what we had over 10, but I'm just thinking if we address it now before it ever could become a problem, then. Why don't the exec board bring something to the board? Would it be different for like a work session? You know, we talked to them, obviously it's more of a dialogue. Does that, would that stay true to a work session or can we it can be write more it either way? You, you, know, you can do it either way. Your practice yeah. has been, which I think makes sense. Yeah. Uh, a, it makes the people that attend the work session do their homework, but you typically have limited your public comment at your work session to the topics that were the subject of the work session. Right. Correct. And a lot, not opening it up for 
what happened last week in Johnny at school. But you have to run the meeting efficiently. And mm -hmm. I mean, I think our past practice has been that the public has had good and ample opportunity to voice their concerns. Mm -hmm. They may disagree. But... So, or, well, Aaron, did you have a question? Yeah. 10 for three minutes as opposed to six for five. And I mean, you know, maybe tit for tat, but I, the thought is three minutes, I'm okay with it. And if, if we were going to make that move or, or do something or, or just really uh, consider doing that and create a policy for it, the sooner the better so that it's not in the midst of something and it would come across to the public that we're shutting down voices. Um, and we would emphasize that within a communication where we go that route to state this is why we're doing this fall in line with the practices of 70% of the other school boards around the country and, and do that as opposed to waiting when Rome is burning and saying we're shutting this down because we don't want the citizens to talk about Rome is burning. I mean, having reduced from three to five or from five to three many times, um, there are a few people that are taken back because they have prepared for their full five minutes. And, uh, but also considering all the comments we've received, I don't think anyone's not been able to relay their point in a well thought of, even slightly more concise manner. And so, uh, I mean, whatever you guys want to do, I don't think, I think we're fixing the problem we don't have. And that's my clarifying question to Tony Quarles. Given the fact that right now, within uh, bylaw 0160, uh, regarding this particular topic, um, if the board had an appetite, as, as discussed, to uh, revise from five to three, what would be the steps that they'd have to take outside of uh, a motion of the vote? And someone's going to have to take the initiative to draft the revision based upon what that person, member, administrator feels that is the consensus of the board and then it would have to be introduced at one meeting and uh, voted on on first meeting and then a second meeting they don't have to be consecutive if there's issues that come up between after the first and before the final right. and i'm hearing maybe uh, if you want to adjust the time and put a cap because we don't in our policy have a cap right you that work. and then maybe i know brad mentioned deferring time is that addressed in our policy currently, so maybe that would also be We've addressed. never allowed it that I've been on the board. I've seen yeah, that I've happen. Yep, I've, seen happen. I've been present for a time, so I defer yeah. their minutes. I, can, I don't think, but I, I would not, I don't recall ever allowing it. It's been asked. Mm -hmm. It's been asked. It wasn't allowed. I, from what I remember, it was in the fall of last year. It was asked and not allowed. Yeah, and that's where we'd like to have it. I think I would like to have that in policy, where we can lean on that. Is there a Okay, so just based on conversation, it sounds like it would be the will of the board for um, to the exec committee along with Dr. Stoltz to kind of reform Dr. that. Stoltz? Dr. Stoltz? <laughs> Dr. Stoltz? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, you, yeah, you, you yeah. started this. <laughs> Dr. Wright, <laughs> to figure out just kind of a, where we want to go with this as far as moving from up to five minutes to the current norm of three minutes, also the deferment, and then oh, the cap. And the cap. Yeah, working okay. session being different. Yeah, to, oh, yes. being, <laughs> working <laughs> session being limited to what the topic is. Okay. Okay. Is that what I'm hearing? And probably limiting it to 10. And then in just whoever signs up the first 10. That way there's no or pick and choose of those. Because well, I the last thing I Yeah, I would, I would I, say I if some, 10. I, I would say 30 minutes. I'd say a 30-minute cap. Okay. And then that way if you might be able to fit 15 people in there. That's fine. I, I just and it's based on order, we're not gonna pick who goes. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Okay. Are you going to allow a person who signed up to yield their time to a prior or subsequent speaker? That's what we're talking about is, you know, put in there a deferment of time to, in the past, I, to people, I don't think we've allowed it, but 
has been asked. It, that just creates problems. Because you could have ever been to further time than one grandstand. Yeah, exactly. You could go on for half an hour and hope it. And I don't think that's what the goal is of public commentary. All right. I think we've got a general idea of what we're wanting. Pete, you look like you're still thinking over there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion before we move to adjourn? No. Okay. All right. Well, without further ado, um, we will adjourn. Thank you. <laughs>